Today, it's about the princess. Field Marshal here, and this is The Princess. Three years in the making. Every detail laser scanned from a real Margolin. Read model cylinders, the coil, the greebly on the top here, even the grips, everything meticulously detailed for you. And in this video, I'm gonna teach you how to build it, and it's easy. Let's do it. This is uh, the Leia Blaster 101 here. We're going to start off at the very beginning of this assembly. And when you get this, you should have all these pieces here, okay? And they're, they're in bags, probably separated, you know, A, B, C, D, you get it, okay? Um, first thing we need to do in this assembly is start off with the hammer and the back strut, okay? Uh, you can't put anything else together until you do that. If you do, or if you've got your kit and you've done that, you're going to figure out real quick that don't work. So what we're doing, I've got a cutaway here to show you what's happening. You've got the hammer, you've got the back strut, spring, and the pivot point here. So we need to do this first before we, we move forward. So that is these parts right here. Okay. And... We gotta, we gotta actually do F and A at the same time, okay? So we're gonna put this in first for F, then we've gotta install the sight bridge before we can put the sear in, okay? So I'll show you that, we'll do that real quick here. Okay, uh, hammer, back strut. Now, make sure this is turned the right directions here. This is real important. You got the hammer and you've got the little hooks right here. And they're going to correspond with the sear, you know, which if you can see this, it's got a curve this way. That's what locks in when, you're, when you pull it back, okay? So that's real important. And then the strut is obviously is this direction here. And it goes into this pivot point, which you grab this little M2 by 6 dowel and line this up. See if I can do this without getting on top of it here. Sometimes it's hard to do the overhead camera and keep my head out of the way. Oops. Get it started there, halfway through. Okay. There we go. Press that in. Now, there ain't many tools you really need for doing this, but one of them I would suggest, because you're gonna need it, is maybe find some little hammer or something that you can use, because this little dial here needs to be flush, so I'm just gonna give a little tap over here on the side of the table, okay? So we have that going, and it should move freely, okay? Now, spring, I think my spring actually still in here. Okay, here we go. Gonna need this spring. And it's just slide it on here, and it's going to stop up against the shoulder on the strut, okay? So, we're going to slide that down through this hole that goes all the way through the back strap here. You can see it right here. And also, it's the same hole we're going to do the mag release with, too. So, drop that in there. By the way, this is pretty much just like the real, real uh, margolin um, functions. And before you ask, all these parts will not interchange. Changed a few things on them, thank God. <laughs> but they are very close. Okay, got that in there. Now, we need to put some tension on that spring, okay? And that's done with one of these dowels here, okay? Number part number 36. And what we do, another tool you're gonna need, get your screwdriver, just a little flat blade screwdriver, okay? From the bottom, in that hole, I'm going to go up in here and I'm going to push on the spring right beside the strut and give the spring some tension. See how it's pushed this up? And then I'm going to drop this in here, working in there, okay? What that, what that did was it captured 
of spraying and stopping it. Now, you can push pretty hard and, and, and get a lot of tension on it. That's just personal preference, but you know, I just do enough to make it function there. So, see that? Okay, good to go. Okay, next, like I said, we need to jump over to assembly A here and we need to put the sight bridge on it. And there's two things. You've got a M216 dowel and a 20. Uh, the longer one goes on the top, has a dual purpose. It also holds the spring for the sear. And I'll show you that in just a minute too. But let's go ahead and slide this on. Okay, orient this correctly. Okay, the short side, there's a long side. Short side here. Now don't spread this. Just kind of wedge it on here. Don't stretch or anything because you're going to break it. Just slide it down. Okay, see how it just locked in right there? That hole, that hole, center hole. Same thing on the back here, okay? Perfect. Okay, now, fun part. We're going to put the sear in. Not hard. It's a little tricky though. But take the sight bridge and just slide it up just a little bit, okay? Where you got about half that hole. Okay. Now the sear is a cool little thing. We we actually copied the real one out of the real Marlin, but it's in aluminum. Obviously, it won't work in the real gun. But what you're going to do is you need this boss sticking out of that hole right there, and you need it to be oriented in that direction with the with the radius that way. Okay, because that's what grabs the hammer. Now what you do, this is a little tricky because you have to force it. Just put it in there straight like that, and then. Press it in. Just snap it in there. It feels like it won't go, but just give it a good, good hard push there. After you get it in there, then push the sight bridge back into the positions with the holes there. Because next, this top hole, use the longer dowel, the, the M220, and you're going to want to look in the, the hole here and get this lined up. Use a little Allen key. Now, I do have this little 50 thousandths Allen key. You're going to need that too. You should have an Allen pack out, but first one you need, this is going to be real handy because just get behind it and push this, get that hole in the sear lined up here. You see that? I use it to, to get the alignment correct. And then hopefully we can tap that into place. Let's see if I got it here. If it didn't move, it did. Okay, let's do this again. Okay. Get the Allen key through this way, come through the back. Okay, I'm gonna use that and push it through. Yeah, until you do this, it's just floating here, so. Oh, there we go. I got a trap now. Okay. Now, get that. Okay, I feel like I caught it that time. Because what you're doing, you're also, this dial actually holds the sight bridge on too, so it's got some tension on it, but it needs to be free for the, for the sear to pivot. And all I'm doing is giving it a little tap that thing through there. It's got to go through the back too. You see that? Sorry I'm having to go off screen here. Got a little place on my bench here to tap these. There it went. Okay. Now I tap. This doesn't go flush here, okay? Sticks out a little bit, but it's flush right here, okay? Now that got pretty rigid too. That's what you want. Now the bottom one will really cinch it together. Go ahead and start that. A little easier there, okay? Man, that's on there good now. If anybody owns a real Marlin, <laughs> these pieces don't come off very easy, so you'll know what I'm talking about because you've probably never taken this back part, never taken it apart. Okay, we've got that, a little sear. I hear it rattling, it's moving around in there. I haven't got anything in a bind, so we're doing good. Okay, now that that's done, we, let's see what we want to do next. I guess we could finish putting together F and A. So um, I guess we'll go ahead and do this, this little tricky part here. Okay, 
Now this dowel here, the, the, the M220 that's sticking out, this, this is going to hold this little spring here, okay? And what you want to do is the curved part, longer part at the bottom is actually going to hook in a little notch on the back of this uh, a piece of the sear here, okay? That's what locks it in place so it don't fly off. So I drop it on there, okay? The little short part is hitting right back here. I hope you can see that. It's hitting right here, okay? Now, here's the part that's tricky. Put your finger over the top of this dowel because if you let go of this thing, you don't want it to snap off, hit you in the eye, or fly off and be gone forever. So just hold on to that. And then I take the screwdriver and go back here and hook this. This may take a couple tries, but don't give up. Move this here forward here. Here we go. Sometimes I do this first try, but almost there. There we go. Okay. See what I did? Got this little clock spring here. Back of it's hitting right here, around, and then it comes and gets in this groove. What you got there, you're golden. Okay. Now the sear has got some tension on it. Now it'll actually it'll actually catch. A hammer. Did you hear that? Beautiful. Okay. Now that that's over with, I'll do something easy here. Okay, the safety. Okay. Now, you're going to need that 50,000 Allen wrench I was talking about. And line it up with this threaded hole right here. fits in these two notches. Works great. Okay. Now, see the rest of A is pretty much this uh, side up here. So you got this threaded rod, sight blade, spring, dowel, and this little uh, little screw. I'm going to go ahead and put this screw. This is the lock screw. I'm going to go ahead and put it in the back right here. It's a 440 hole. Okay. Make sure it's clear and everything's good with it. Screw that in. I think it's easier to do it. Just start it. Don't don't go in with it. Uh, it's easier to start it without the wheel in the way. So I'm going to. You want this piece with the divot toward the back? Well, first of all, this is the fun part here. Drop this spring. This is the this is the ball. This is the latch that goes in these little little holes. We're done with the ball end mill, and uh, that's what. Uh, you make it click. If you were to polish these up, get it real nice, this will actually function. So just like the real one. Now, this little threaded rod on here. Thread the wheel onto that. Okay. That slides in there. It's tight. Just like the real one. It's just really tight. Keep it all in alignment. Okay. There we go. Okay, now went a little bit far. Do just push it back out. You want to be able to see that little dial right there, and it will click in those little holes. See that? Beautiful. And I'll put a little tension on it. Okay. There we go. Got the sight. That's done. Okay. Well, let's, let's see where we are now. We have all of F is done. All of A is done. I think I'll drop down here to G because you know, since we were working in the in the back strap hole here, we'll go ahead and finish that up. Okay. This is the catch. It's two pieces. Got the rod. Got the actual catch part. Just screw that in there. Now, it's important to line this up. Okay, and the distance is going to be important. It's, it's adjustable. So you want it facing the hook, facing this way, and then the hole th this way. And uh, just make sure, you, you, you know, it's not important for that to be tight. Don't worry about tightening that up. That's just there for distance. Okay. 
that is going to slide into up to this hole. It's got to coordinate with this hole. Okay, see that? There again. I'm going to put it in there. I'm going to stick this Allen wrench in there to go ahead and trap it. And then from the back side here, I'm going to push it through. That way it'll stay in alignment. I won't have to chase it. Look at that. Beautiful. Now, it is a little tight, so use a hammer. Okay, beautiful. Got that. Next part, got spring. Just slide it in the back there. No big deal. Just tuck it in there. Well, that thing's will pivot. Next, got the mag itself. A little, little mock mag I made up here, but uh, the bottom plate is uh, accurate. Um, lines up. Got an indention here. Do that. Drop the Allen key in there. Now this is a 5 30 seconds Allen key. And just tighten it up. Anybody that has a real marble and you look on the bottom of the mag, it looks... You got that out of the line. Hold on. Okay, there we go. You got that little port to take the mag apart, but that screw back looks just like it. So here we go. Let's see if it fits. It locks in. Look at that. Very nice. Okay. We'll refer back to the assembly here. G's done. Probably the next thing we ought to do is deal with deal with these right here. Okay. E and B and they go in H here. They all kind of work together. Now when you get this out of, the, out of the bags there, you're going to notice I have probably already put the mag plate or the trigger plate in. If it it's kind of snug, tight, line to line, I do that just to make sure it's going to go in because on the real Marlin, it is a press fit. It is, if you've ever had one, it's almost impossible to get it back apart. I didn't quite do it that tight because that would have been nuts. But uh, let's see here. Okay. Well, I tell you what, I'm going to get this out of the way. There's a, a little trigger block screw and spring it goes on the bottom of the trigger guard i'm just going to go ahead and screw that in just so it don't roll around on the table that's easy um that's part 20, 20, 26 to 27 here let's go straight in next we're going to do uh 21 24 23 24 25 blah 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 uh, we'll knock those out okay first of all we've got these number 25 and number 23 okay uh 25 is the short dial. That's an M216. And what we want to do is get the trigger linkage uh, attached to the trigger here into this hole, okay? And just do what we've done before. Line it up. Let's see if we push that through. Okay, there we go. Now, you're going to have to tap that in flush. Okay? See that? Beautiful. Now, notice on the back, you got a hole that breaks into the slot here. That's for the trigger spring. I did alter something from the real Marlin. Uh, there is a different type of trigger spring that they use that actually went in this slot. It's really difficult to put that in. That's why I designed it this way, so it'd be a lot easier, okay? So, that, that'll definitely, if you ever had to do that on the real one, you'd appreciate that. Next... We got to put in the uh, 23s here. There's two of them. Uh, they're a little bit longer dowel. I think they're uh, the M28s. And these things will drive you crazy. They go on these two holes here and they want to fall out all the time. So I am going to cheat and I'm going to put a little bit of, of super glue on mine and I'm going to super glue them in these holes so I don't have to fight them. Well, if I can get to it, might be a pair of needle nose. They're real close to the wall here. There we go. Make sure that's all the way in there, okay? Beautiful. Now let's do the next one here. Yeah, it's hard to get your fingers in here, I know. But that's the way it is. Okay, let me see if I can get this one in here better. There 
There we go. Okay. Push on with the shirt down there. Okay. Nice. That'll make things a little easier. Okay. Next is the trigger itself. Okay. Now, this spring's going to stick out and get in the way, but it's the way it is. Okay. Now, it's going to go through that pivot in the top. I go ahead and get it started right here. Okay. The spring's in the way. It's getting in a bind. So, take the flathead screwdriver and just push it to where it'll go into the wall right here. Okay. So, you've got, got your tension. See that? Also, notice that this linkage goes back here and there's a notch for it that comes back to the sear. That's how the gun fires, okay? So if you hold this down here, you can, oh, look, release the hammer there. Beautiful. But at least I know everything's gonna function. Okay, now, next part, a little tricky. It's another clock spring, okay? And there again, hold on to this thing. <coughs> they wanna fly off. Let's see here. Okay, the short end is going to go against the back wall of the trigger housing here. So I'm going to, and it goes underneath the linkage. So working under there, put it on the dowel, just like that. You see that? How it's down there? Then all you do, this end has a catch on it, like a little cup. Come down here, bend it back, and, and it goes up under this linkage here. Look at that. So that's what keeps the tension underneath the sear. Now it won't pop off once you get the when the when the trigger uh, when the the grips are on it, it holds this down. So there you go. That's that's looking good. Okay. Next thing, trigger plate like we're talking about. You can go ahead and put that on there now. Make sure you get it straight in there. It won't go in in a bind. Okay. Beautiful. Went right down. Okay. Little screw. Also, I'd like to mention, if you'll notice these odd screws, I actually had these custom made. They are, they're actually copies of the real screw heads that are on the real margolin. So uh, just to you know, keep it as accurate and detailed as possible. Now I did change the threads on them to, to uh, Imperial threads. So they're, most of these things are 832, 440, and 256. So just makes things a little easier than having strange Russian threads, okay? <laughs> so I thought that'd be better. So, okay, now we need to put the grips on. Let's go ahead and do that so everything will stay together here. Oops, got four screws. And a little, little note about these grips. Uh, this is one of the hardest things I had to make for this assembly. And notice they, they're, they're contoured, they've got a uh, a, a beautiful uh, diamond checkering on them and logos on them and they did they come out really well uh, the real grips are a Bakelite and a lot harder uh, these are I molded these in softer plastic and they do they do flex a little bit so make sure they're flat if you may have to heat them if they're real bad but most of these look pretty good also check for flashing on the back so what I did during the break right there is just make sure these things were going to go on there because there's some flashing from the injection molding process. Uh, this, this boss in the center here is going to go in this cavity here. Just want to make sure everything lines up correct. Flat heads. And these are some beautifully recreated screws too, like the originals, except with imperial threads. Look at that. Okay, let's do the same thing over here. Notice the cutout right here for the sight bridge too. Make sure you get that correct. Locked in. Beautiful. Okay. Safety is still moving. Clicking in place. Made for a right-hander. 
Okay, guys. Next thing, now that we've got the grips on, all that's good. We need to work on the upper. And um, I did make an improvement to the, the J uh, setup here with a different slide rod and front uh, block. And I'll show you that. Uh, we had not need to put this little sub-assembly together because uh, when we put the barrel and the slide on, we'll need that to hold it on. So we'll go ahead and do this little sub-assembly, okay? The, the rod, threaded rod, is going to go through the front block here, okay? A little knurled cotter. Get it facing the right direction here. Go ahead and screw it on. Now this looks, I got the knurling, everything looks perfect on. The real one actually pulls out, has a little V-block that holds it open, but we're not, this is not a real firearm, so let's see. Then you get the spring, that goes down in the hole there. This is just a guide for it. And then, you're going to want to put this nut on here, and that holds that together. Done. Okay. Next, let's see what we have to do here. Um, barrel assembly. Got barrel. That pin is going to go there. That locks this in place. Now, if you're doing a, if you're carrying this cosplay, whatever, you might want to put a little epoxy here, just so this doesn't jiggle, wiggle loose, anything like that. But it does fit pretty tight. But some people may want to glue that. We'll go ahead and do this. Um, okay. Front sight goes on here okay now there is an o-ring here that's optional this is kind of a a bumper okay goes like that then this piece here you got your adjustment disc here and that fits in there nice and snug get that lined up because the next thing is you've got the sight. And the sight is actually going to screw in here and actually lock this on top of the on top of the barrel here, which you know you can use a little wrench for that if you want to, or you can or you can glue it either way. And then let's see here, I've got two of those, only need one. Uh, so you've got your little uh, lock down screw here, little cheese head screw that we had copied. And that little guy screws in there. And you will need a flat head. Make sure you got make sure you have good contact. So you don't strip it or mark it up. There you go. Now that goes on there. And next. Now you'll do this. This these are reverse, these are left-handed threads. So this would go next. But you probably wouldn't put these on here until you've painted. But the reed cylinder, I already have it drilled out for you. Now this is going to press on, so you're going to have to take a, a hammer and kind of tap that on. I don't suggest doing that until you're ready because it's going to be tight. Do that after you've painted. Uh, the coil is here, and all you do is just wind this on. This comes off on and off pretty easy, so you don't worry about that. And then this left hand thread's here. Okay. I'm going to stick this in here, okay? Now this does, this is going to bind it. So kind of have this in alignment where you want it, you know, center line. And you do need the, this dowel flush, okay? because the slide, when you put it on here, will hit it. So just make sure you have that all the way down, okay? Same thing here, you got an optional O-ring. It's just for tension. Won't show after you put the cylinder on right here, okay? But there again, left-handed, left-hand threads. 
and also gives you some room for adjustment so that this is lined up with the top. Let's see how we're doing here. Look at that. Okay. Now, we're at the end. Slide. Now, the slide, if you want this to function and, and you've gone through some, if you've masked it off and you get everything working out right, you can do a little sanding and polishing on these rails and uh, this will this will let you can actually pull it back. So if not, if you're just doing a static build, that ain't this important. But now notice when you put this on, you have to you have to have the hammer all the way back, okay? That slides on like that. Okay. Okay, now we need to put the recoil in there. Now notice you've got a slot here. You've got a wider slot here. Okay. The wider section. It's going to go on this side, and there's two notches here and here. Those go forward, okay? This rear notch right here is going to, basically, this thing's going to sit like this right here. You see that? Get that in the screen there, okay? So, now, in the, in the very bottom of the hole here, there is a, there's a little counterboard hole for this nut to go into. It keeps it in alignment. So slide that in, get that in position, okay? And when you do, you need your trusty screwdriver again. The actual slide block, you're gonna push, you're gonna push that back, okay? And you push this back so that you make room. You see that? There we go. Let it get away from it. Push it back, and then this should drop in here. Okay. Get go through the other side here. Oh, there we go. Okay. Now, those little notches just pop through and caught, and that holds everything together. Okay. Not bad. I haven't even polished this one. Look at that. Now, let's come with this little greebly here. This is the, after you get done painting, you, you paint this black, this glues on right here. Well, there you have it. Not that hard. If you have any questions, I'm always here. You can text me, email me, and uh, have fun.